As promised, here is a story time video. Eddie Mason wanted one, and I was going to do this video anyhow. So it's not a, it's not like a logging story time or anything like that. This video, this story time video, is going to be something that started in September the 12th of 2017, and it ended this past Tuesday night uh, in February. Uh, you, you hear a lot of stuff about people on YouTube and interacting with the fans, just like Chris and I did, Let's Dig, this past weekend. And you see a lot of the good stuff. Uh, you never really hear too much about the, the really bad stuff. And, and I've dealt with some, with some really weirdos, to say the least, uh, through my YouTube journey. And it's like... No matter what I do, I get rid of one or two, and I gain one or two back. And, and it's just crazy, but this guy here that I'm fixing to introduce y'all to is by far the worst experience I've ever had with a YouTuber. It actually scared me and Jill uh, last Tuesday night, a, a week from the night when I'm filming this video right now. And... Uh, I'm just going to kind of give you a rundown of, of what all happened, and I got some stuff here on my phone that I'm going to show you. But I'm going to start out by showing you who this guy is. That's him right there. His name is Scott Ware. His phone shows up. It lists as uh, Silver Springs, Maryland, but I don't think he's in Silver Springs. I think he actually lives in Fort Washington. That's where he lives. And... uh he first contacted me like a lot of people do. He sent me a friend request on Facebook, and and I accepted it. And then he sent me a message and said, you know, that he enjoyed my stuff. And he was a Christmas tree farmer, which he's not a Christmas tree farmer. Um, and you'll learn more about that as it goes on. But And I always respond back to people who, who send me messages like that. And I always say thank you. I appreciate the support. Thank you for watching the videos. Most people, when I do that, that's kind of the end of it. Uh, there are some people that when I message back, it automatically, for some reason in their mind, we are best buddies like that right there. Well, y'all know everything about me, but I don't know anything about y'all. And so when somebody thinks we're best buddies, no, in fact, we're not best buddies because I don't know anything about you. I don't know who's on the end of that screen typing. I've had somebody tell me they were going to kill me already back uh, in August of last year and just really, really weird stuff. And I can usually tell when I'm dealing with somebody who I really don't want to deal with because this guy right here followed the same suit Scott did. He would message me, and he was constantly messaging me, constantly. And I would just blow him off. I would wait two or three days sometime to respond back. And you could look at his, his profile, and he may not have been online for 12 hours, but by golly, as soon as I sent him a message, I got one right back. You know, and then he was wanting to talk, wanting to chit-chat, you know. And those are the ones who you don't want to deal with or at least who i don't want to deal with uh, you know i don't mind talking to people but you know i don't have time to sit here all day long and and chit chat and everything well things kind of started getting a little bit weird when jill and i were coming back from paul bunyan this was uh, about three weeks after the first contact that i had with him jill and i were driving back i was driving scott was messaging me I have over 50 hey or hey Tims or hey Tim are you there in separate messages in the Facebook thread on, on, on my phone right here. Hey, hey Tim, you there Tim, you know, and I would get that. But anyhow, we were coming back. He was met. He wanted to talk to me on the phone. I didn't want to talk to him. Uh, Jill and I had been up there at Paul Bunyan for three days straight. We had talked to thousands of people up there. Wade had, everybody that was there had. And I, I, we were driving. I didn't want to talk to him. 
he started talking about a tree that he had in his yard he wanted to get cut down uh there's the tree right there he sent me a picture of it about three months later well he sent me that picture uh, it's been around the first of february when he finally sent me that picture but he had a tree up there and he was talking about he wanted me to he wanted to talk to me on the phone so that i could give him some advice on the tree and then he wanted he was offering to pay for me to come up there and all this and i just told him i, I couldn't talk jill was asleep in the van which she wouldn't i just didn't want to talk to the guy and uh so it kind of rocked on like that and we got i believe it was december he sends me a he sends me a message and he says i want to come me and my girlfriend want to come visit you this spring i'm like okay that's fine i told him i said pick out about three dates and i'll check my calendar and we'll match something up i said but nothing on the weekend i said if you can't come during the week i don't want you here and i told him that plain and simple so right here right there you can see one of the hay tims are you around and you see he you see the dates right there you ask about see march the 19th 20 or 21st and you see i say any of those days that week will work so then he wants to know he wants to talk to me at this time he still don't have my he still don't have my phone number i tell him i'm deer hunting which i am so we lined it up for the the 21st for him to come in march so about three weeks ago i get a message from him and he says this right here are you still okay with february the 22nd and automatically i'm like did i miss something or, or whatever i thought well maybe i misread it whatever i don't care i looked at my calendar right quick and i i was free that day and i'm like screw it let's just get this crap over with where i can get this guy we'll get him here he can visit and i'll be done you know what i mean and I, I tell him, I say, uh, I say, yeah, February 22nd is good. I said, if it rains that day, I'll meet you at the shop. And then he, he tells me he's bringing something for Jill. He's bringing something for Anna Kate and my daughters and all that. Well, at this time, he still does not have my phone number. And so we, we rock on to, let me get my date straight right here uh february the 18th which is on a sunday he's coming he contacts me that sunday and he says on the 18th and he says hey tim we're gonna leave in the morning that monday morning on the 19th we're gonna leave early that morning and we're gonna drive halfway and he said we're gonna stop in gastonia north carolina and then we're gonna drive down the rest of the way tuesday the 20th and we'll be here sometime tuesday afternoon i'm like okay cool uh you know that's fine well so that sunday afternoon he wants to talk to me you know he and i'm thinking well when somebody tells you they're coming that's a game changer they've got to have your phone number then so he messages me back and he asked me he says tim do you got a few minutes to talk while well, sitting there on a the computer i said yeah that's fine so i send him my phone number and up to this time up till february the 18th he hadn't had my phone number and i knew as soon as i sent it to him the phone was going to ring which it did i pick it up when i answered the phone this is freaking creeper ten thousand people this is the guy that you hear that is in the is in the horror movies that's killing people and i'm thinking what have i done got myself into and i'm gonna let y'all listen to a voice message in a minute where you can hear what this dude sounds like and so we end up on the phone for 25 minutes but here's the worst part about the deal and i have no problem with somebody like this right here he stuttered i'm not talking about just barely stuttered he stuttered to, to the point to where it would take five to seven seconds to get a word out of his mouth. 
so I tell him, I finally tell him, look, Scott, I've got to go. I've done given him enough time. You know, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, what do people want from me? I mean, why is it that sometimes when people watch my stuff, they feel like I owe them something just for watching my videos? And I'm trying to get that in my mind and understand that. But I'm also trying to be nice to this guy and all this right here. Well, you can forget nice anymore. Nice ain't happening no more, man, I'll tell you. So I tell him I got to go. I say, just, you know, text me when you get in town. He's got, ho he's got a hotel picked out that's not a normal chain hotel in Columbus. So he's done doing, you know, his research and everything. So he texts me Monday night, says him and his girlfriend are in uh, Gastonia, and they're going to get up. My, I just text back a few hours later. Okay. So Tuesday, we are trying to move. Uh, we are wrapping a job up that we're on. Uh, I'm on the road grader. Working on the road, working on the road to load the road grader, get ready to load the road grader up on the low board. My phone starts ringing. I look at it. It's him. I just decline the call real quick because I want to load the motor grader up. And I text him, I'm on the road grader. I will call you when I get off the phone. I mean, off the road grader. And so he texted me then. <clears throat> He texts me and he says, hey, we are here. Thanks, Scott. It's 1237 and I'm thinking, man, if he left Gastonia at 630 this morning, he had to book it. So I looked at it on the, on the map real quick and I did the math and I thought, you know, he could have made it, but he would have had to not stop. So I didn't really think nothing about it. You know, he may have left earlier or something like that. He says, we're here. And then I text him right back and I said, give me a minute. I'm on the grader right now. And he says, okay. And uh, so I get off the grader and I'm thinking, I'll just go ahead and get him out because you want to come to the job, you know. So I call him and I say, Scott, y'all want to come on out now because we're in the midst of moving, but I'm still going to be on the old job for a minute. And I think that'd be the best thing. I'll just go ahead and get his tail out of here get this over and done with so i call him tell him that he's like no nah, man we've been driving all day uh we're gonna go ahead and check in the hotel and rest you know and i said okay that'll work and uh so he then he texted me at 3 43 that tuesday afternoon and he says can you recommend a place to grab some lunch near here? And I say, if you're at the Wingate Inn, if you head west to the very next exit, all the restaurants are right there. I said, Cracker Barrel and everything else. And he says, oh, and then he responds back. That's at 347. He responds back. And of course, I tell him when I'm on the phone, I said, it'll be about four o'clock before I get done at work. And I'll let you know once I get done, get, get everything situated at home. So he texts at uh, 4.44, and he says, okay, our stomachs are full. And I'm, I'm already home getting cleaned up and all. And I said, give me about 20 more minutes, and I'll send you a location where we can meet. And he responds right back at 4.45 and says, okay. So in just a little bit, once I get situated and where I want to meet him, I send him a location. <clears throat> now, this is just before Jill gets home. And so I've contacted Jill and I said, I want you to be on standby because when I see him and I've already done told Jill, I said, when this guy says he's bringing his girlfriend, I said, I'm not real sure that his girlfriend is actually going to be a guy when he gets out because, and I ain't got no problem with that, but that's the way this cat sound. It was like it right there. And so I, I had, I had done, I had done, my pistol was ready. It was on me. I had my shirt untucked. It was inside my waistband, ready to go. I had a gun stashed out here. I had another one in my truck. So, cause I done, I done gotten really weird feeling about this. And I'd actually talked to, 
two other people about this, explaining to them what was going on. And they said, look, just keep us posted, you know, and all that. So that was at almost five. And he texts five minutes later, and the hotel he's staying at is not but about ten minutes from where I want to meet at. He texts me about five minutes later, and he says, okay, we're leaving now. So after about 30 minutes, I ain't heard anything from him. Well, I don't know if he's had a wreck or if he's had a flat or what's done happen. So I text at 45 minutes after all that, I text. I said, you making it okay? I don't hear anything from him. So it went a little while longer and I called Jill and I talked to her and I said, I'm going to come on to the house and I'm going to go ahead and eat supper right quick. And uh, so I went to the house and when I walked in the house, I told Jill, I said, Jill, I said, this guy ain't in Columbus. I said, he's not here. I said, I know good and well he ain't here. I told her, I said, I'm going to go ahead and eat supper right quick and I'm going to the wind gate. Because like I said, it's, it's not far from, from where we live. So I ate, jumped in my truck, and went to the wind gate. He wasn't there. So I text him. I said, hey, Scott, you want to explain what's going on? Well, then I start trying to call him. I get his voicemail and all that. And he won't, it rings one time and it goes to his voicemail. So I'm going to play a voice message right here. And I'm going to play it twice for y'all where y'all can hear this here. Hey, Tim. It's Scott. Um, we're here. Um, you need to call the Oh, don't call and when you can, 301-75-3445. Bye. Hey, Tim, it's Scott. Um, we're here. Um, give me a call. Oh, don't call and when you can, 301-75-3445. Bye. So I get home. I'm kind of scared, you know what I mean? You know, I don't want to have to shoot somebody, but I mean, somebody does something to me or my family, you know, that's what the outcome is going to end up being. So I text him back and I send him the same message through Facebook and I tell him, I say, look, Scott, you got till Wednesday at lunch to fix this problem right here and explain to me what's going on. I said, if not, I'm going to make a video about this and I'm going to play the voice message back on for the world to see. And I'm going to show them your Facebook, just like what I just did. And uh, in doing some digging, I realized he had a connection with another YouTuber. So I got a hold of this other YouTuber. I'm not going to tell you who it is. I get a hold of him. The next morning early and I asked him I said do you know anything about Scott Ware and he says oh for the love of God this guy is a nut he's a pathological liar he is a scammer and even though he stutters to the point you can't understand him he's a good talker very believable I almost bought into his lies and promises but he screwed up and I called him I never would have thought he would do this thing to other YouTubers. Well, what my goal is, is to get this out to where, and what I did was I contacted all of my YouTuber friends that I got, and I said, hey, watch out for this guy right here. If he contacts you, run. If you anybody sees him, run. That's why I, have, I am killing my Snapchat. I'm taking everybody off of my Snapchat except for about four or five hundred people that I halfway kind of know. I have met some of the best people through YouTube that you can meet all around the world. I have some really good friends now through YouTube. And that's why I'm going to take my Facebook and I'm going to start a Cotton Top 3 page that you're going to have to like, and I'm going to take everybody off. I am sick and tired of people. I had, I had a guy this weekend, same thing. Hey, hello. 
Hey Tim, hey Tim, you there? Already know red flags everywhere. He's pro he's a problem. He's he got something wrong with him. You know, Scott, I don't know. He may have some you may have something wrong with you, my friend. But you can't do stuff like that to people, man. You can't. Scott block Scott on everything. Well, I say I blocked him. I blocked him in my phone. I blocked him on Facebook. But I don't know what he's under on YouTube. That's the problem with YouTube, Snapchat, Instagram. I think I know who he is on Instagram if it's the same person that I've kind of put two and two together on. I'm not real sure on that, but you don't you don't know who who is who. And so when you're a YouTuber and you're like me or like anybody else on YouTube, you're trying to be as nice as you can to people to grow your channel and to have fans and things like that. But there's a point where you you have to draw a line. You have to draw a line. And it's like I said, if that's something that you're not crazy about with me, if I'm not going to respond back to you or anything, there's plenty of other YouTubers out there to watch and harass besides me. I don't have time for it. I'm growing my channel. I have a full-blown business with Cotton Top 3 that is self-sufficient on its own. I just have to feed videos to it, fuel the fire with videos. And like I said, I've had some other kind of what I would call nut cases, but nothing like this right here. And so if you get unfriended on Facebook, it's nothing against you. I'm just trying to protect myself because I have put myself out there a little too far. And that's my fault. That's my fault. If you want to come see me, I had a guy email the other day right after all this happened. And he says, I come up and down 82 all the time going to Starville. He said, I'm going to drop in y'all's shop one day up there. I said, listen, I emailed him back. I said, don't. I said, do not drop in. And this goes for anybody. Um, unless I absolutely know you, you are not welcome to just drop by unannounced. Uh, my mom and dad this past week, I've got a guy up in Tennessee that has done got their number that's calling my mom and dad's wanting a job, their home phone number and everything. I'm sitting there thinking, holy cow what are people thinking you know we're you know it's youtube we're i'm just a normal person i'm not no superstar or anything like that but i told the guy i said don't come by our shop unless i know that you're coming you're not welcome unless i welcome you and and that's with anybody that's one of my rules don't just come by I really, if you, even if you see our signs on the road somewhere, I'd really rather you not even pull in unless you contact me or something and let me know that you're there where I can kind of get things situated, you know. And I only, I will meet people, but I only do it during the week. I don't want to meet people on the weekend. And here's why, because I get up very early in the morning. I work all day long. And then I do the YouTube stuff in the evenings and at night. And then I go to ball games and all that stuff like that. And I want my weekends free. I want to be able to hang out with like if I uh, see Let's Dig or I'm going to, the, um, you know, to Farm Day or I got a logging show. That's the best way to see me is at a logging show or a show or something like that. And then that way it'll be on the weekend. And you're more than welcome to come by and, and see things like that. But... I wanted to share that story uh, was very, if I would have filmed this the day after it happened, I would have had to say, listen, people, y'all fixing to hear a lot of cussing and that's just, and y'all would just had to listen to it. But uh, it's been a week go by now and I've calmed down and I've cooled down and, uh, but not, not a very good experience. And, uh, so 
and I'm still working on. I've undone like over 2,000 people on just Snapchat. I'm still just working on Snapchat right now, and that takes time to do that. And then I'm going to hit Facebook. I have undone some people on Facebook. I, I get so many of the virus things sent to me on people that get hacked, and, they, and it sends this message through, Tim, is this you? That's a virus, people. If you ain't got your um, password set high enough level, you need to you, you need to redo your password where people don't hack you and things like that. But that and some of the sharing things and things that are sent to me and all, man, I, I you know I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm just trying to protect myself and my family. It's what I'm trying to do. Cause I don't want somebody just showing up here at the house. That would not be good at all. It would be, it would be ugly. It would be really ugly. And so, I hope that everybody understands this video is like 25 minutes long. It's sitting here in my shop, and I need to get that off my chest. And um, and I know there's been other YouTubers who have had problems like this. Me and Chris, uh, let's dig. We're talking and. Uh, He's had some stuff go on, not nothing like this. I know that Wes has in the past and 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 all. But uh, so I'm gonna let you go. If you like my stuff, please subscribe to me. I would appreciate it. Uh, you can find all my my shirts and clothing and stuff. Clickable link right down below. All my camera gear, everything that I use, editing, all that stuff is in a amazon link you click on it and it'll take you right to it so i'm gonna go from now and get this video uploaded hopefully publish it be we y'all be watching this is tuesday night y'all be watching it wednesday morning but i love each and every one of y'all understand that i love each and every one of y'all but there's a line there too there's a line when it goes past being a fan to being just weird as crap you know what i mean weird as crap i don't like weird as crap that's not no fun so i'm gonna let y'all go right now uh we'll catch y'all later later taters so before i end this video i never heard from him he never answered his phone he never responded to facebook message text or anything and when I got back home, I told Jill, I said, if there's any good from this, I said, that allows me to cut, to totally cut ties uh, with him and you know, be done with that. So I'm not accepting any more Facebook uh, requests from any anybody unless I just absolutely know you. And, you know, no, I don't mean anything bad, but by taking people off but i've got to the the videos is my bread and butter and i've got to keep videos coming out and i don't need to lose focus on that by facebook or snapchat or anything like that and everybody should understand and i'm sure some people are probably up, upset about that and all but like i said there's plenty of other youtubers out there so uh we'll see y'all